Good morning and welcome back to Home Renovation Experts. You wouldn't know this, but this is now the second time I've recorded this because I forgot to press the record button, it turns out. And when I finished my little intro, I was looking at it going, why is the timer not counting? So there you go. That's the start of my day so far. Uh, so where was I? So if it wasn't here yesterday, roofing parts are all now in. All the roof joists, all the noggins, it's ready to rock and roll. All the trimmers are on the side, all the soffit hangers. It's all ready to go, basically. Um, what I'm going to do first thing is I'm going to whip these bad boys up. So these truss clips go up like this. Tacked in there, tacked in there, tacked in the side. That'll hold that in place. They're all ready, spiked in the angle. Three going that way, three going the other way. So they're already not going anywhere, aside of engineering. But again, while I'm here doing it, now's the time. Um, the other thing I've got to do this morning is, let me see if I can find a, a good example. So, here we go. You can just see on these parts here, yeah, it's raised up. This isn't the worst one. There are some absolutely belters which are terrible, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just shamp for that edge off. So what I'm gonna do is get my electric plane, <coughs> just quickly run that down, zip them off, level them off, just so that when my boards sit on them, they're gonna fit flush. You're not gonna be kinking up and stuff in certain places. Uh, once I've planed that, put the trusses on, I am then going to be fitting my 18 mil OSB3 boarding to the roof. Uh, so when I do this, I'll basically make sure I leave at least a four mil gap between each board, because what will happen is, as it gets sort of heats up and expands and contracts, because the rubber roofs make it bloody hot, if they're tight up against each other, they can do what's known as cupping, where they just kind of hit each other at the edge and just lift, because they're trying to expand and there's no room for them to do it. So by leaving a four mil gap between each board, you allow them the capacity to then manoeuvre, which is just much, much better. So that'll be that done. Uh, and if there's enough time, and depending on what time it turns up, I have got my rubber roof uh, out for delivery today. So hopefully it's here in time that worst case scenario, I can have these boards on and then just flop it over the top to cover it so it's waterproofed. If there's enough time, depending on when it turns up, I might better get glued down. I just, I don't know. You know, it depends on the weather gods because like yesterday, I mean, I'm still, still a bit wet here. Um, so as long as it doesn't pit leak down, I should be fine and I should hopefully better get some of that done, but it's all dependent on timings and deliveries really. Uh, so apart from that, I've had a cup of tea. So I'm all ready to sort of start lugging a lot of boards onto the roof once I've trimmed that first. Otherwise that'd be a pain. Imagine I put that lot up there and gone, oh, I need to bloody shamp for that lot off. That'd be the pain. Uh, right, that is it. I'm gonna crack on and start the day. Right, and see, this is what I'm talking about. Check out that. I mean, that's one hell of a step, isn't it? So. Electric planer, I've set this one to like maximum depth. How long did that take? No time at all, and now it's nice and flush. I'll do that to the last couple going in that direction. I mean, look at that one at the end, bloody Nora. So I'll quickly run around, do that. It doesn't take long to do, and it's done. Now all my boards are gonna run perfectly flat and smooth on this surface, quality. That cloud means nothing. It's blowing over, so I'm telling myself anyway. Right, up on the roof, three boards are now up here. So what I've done is, this is the first one. So basically this one is now in place. So what I've done is lined up the front, lined up with that edge, laid this one next to it, butted it up and got this one, you can see, it's like overlapping the two boards right through the center, give or take. So that now allows me, because I know this one is squaring in, so I fixed this one. That one I've pulled tight up against it. I've dropped in three mil spaces because I Googled it, because I was like, you know what, I've always been putting four mil spaces in between these things. And I was like, I wonder what a tolerance is actually means to be in. It's two to three mil. So three mil it is. Um, so that's from the website, so I know it's okay. So three mil spaces in here, so you can see there's an expansion gap now, so that's butted up nice and tight. I then got this one in just to make sure that the boards are gonna run true to one another, okay? Because otherwise, if you just pinned this one and this one, and there was a slight kink to the left or the right, when this board comes in, there's gonna be a massive gap in the center. And we don't want that. I mean, we want expansion, but we wanna control the expansion and have it exactly where we need it. So what I'll do now is, I will come across here, and I want every board to finish on a joist, okay? I don't want any overhangs. If you're using tongue and groove, you're fine and dandy because you can overhang it, it doesn't matter because the actual tongue and groove part obviously you need to lock, it's a glue joint, it's good as gold. But when you're using 18 mil OSB, 
then you want it to sort of finish on the joist because you don't want any flex at that joint, okay? So, how do I cut that? Well, luckily for me, I've got a plunge saw. So literally, all I would do is grab my rail. This is a Festool one, just in case you're wondering. And then what I can do is, if you look here, I know exactly where my joist starts because I've got that there. So all I'll do is line that up with that. I'm trying to do that in camera and there as well. I can then come this side, double check that I'm definitely through the center of that joist, like I am. I will now set the plunge depth on the Festool to about 20 mil, because all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through the board and just into the top of the joist tidily, not much at all, like about a mil, like that. I'll run that. And that is it done. So what that does is it just saves you having to like cut each board individually. You know what I mean? Kind of maybe you have a hanging it over there and trying to do a cut and trying to get it nice. This is a lot easier. Now I appreciate that a lot of you guys doing DIY won't have access to these sort of tools. And you know, all you have to do in this circumstance, if that is you, is basically take a measurement from the edge of that board over there to where the center of this joist is that you want to reach. Take a measurement from that end so that side of the joist, make sure it's in the center, mark your line down it, and you can then just take your circular saw and just cut it. If you haven't got like a, um, a rail to run it on, you want a nice straight edge, all you really need to do then is grab like a long level, lay it across where the cut's gonna be, but what you have to do is you have to take into account that the fact that the blade is over here, so you'd have to offset your level and put it sort of here-ish. So you just have to measure it and fanny around a little bit, but it's not difficult to do. And in that way, you'll get a perfectly straight cut because your saw, your circular saw, imagine the, um, the level's here. It's just gonna follow that level perfectly. Clamped on, clamped on, done. I hope that makes sense. If not, say that it doesn't make sense, Steve, and I'll write it in the comment below uh, so that it's a bit more explained. But basically, yeah, if you're a DIY and you've only got basic tools, you can easily do one of these builds. It's not a problem at all. Um, but anyway, that's where I'm at. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna chop that one. I'll then get, this board through centre, fix that one, and then that's it. I'm away with a mixer then, cracking on. See, that cloud's already gone. Just move there. But it's going in that direction, so it's fine. Oh yeah, before I forget, securing it, I'm using 63 mil ring cut nails, which are in the uh, gun over there. So what I'll do is, I'll just put this mark, this could be a level, could be anything, doesn't matter, uh, through the centre of there, like I said, figure out where the centre of the uh, joist is on here, put it in position, run yourself a pencil mark all the way along, like this. Now I take my nail gun, boom, 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 boom. And I'm hitting the joist every single time. And you want to put in, I'd say at least sort of five inches, give or take, five, six inches. Just put a load in. You can't overdo it, so you've got your expansion gaps out, but you can underdo it. So yeah, just make sure you put plenty in. Um, and that's it, basically, you're sorted. You're all now down, you're cut, you've got expansion gaps, you're overlapping at the joints. Get on and do the roof. Now, the other thing you've got is, uh, for, well, for, for me, if you've got a rectangular one, you're fine. But where I've got like the angle, I'll just show you how to do that in a little bit once I get to that section. But again, not complicated. Right, I've got to that stage where it's now the corner, the, uh, the angled version of what it is I'm doing. So what I've done is, so one of my first balls here, you can just see, just required that little bit of angly dangly. So that's been done. Again, this is not rocket science. It's really quite simple. So look, for me with this system, if you're using the, um, what do you call it? What do you call it? Uh, level or whatever you've got as a straight edge, because uh, you've just got a normal circular saw, you know what the distance is between where the blade is and the edge of the, the, the uh, actual unit. So I know my blade's there and that's there. So if I was doing that, I'll take that measurement from the blade to there then my level would go on this side. So that runs perfectly to it. So you'd be sort of setting up over here somewhere. So to do the cut here, but obviously I've got a plunge saw, so it makes life a little bit easier. So basically just line it up with there. And if I come over this way, you can see, and I can use the camera to see, that I just drag that basically over to where I need it to be. So spot on, basically there. Make sure the back is still lined up, which it is. And now I literally, I'll do the cut, I'll show you. Take the plunge. Like I say, she's set at about 20 mil. I'm 
glad that went well. Because <laughs> he's recording, if it doesn't, oh, never mind. But there you go, perfect, every time. Uh, no, seriously, it is every time. It's not, you see what I mean? It's not difficult. Once you've got your eyeball on it, put your van on it. So if you're using this, like I say, if you've got a normal circle saw, you haven't got a plunge, say this is my straight edge, I figure out where my distances are, get that pinned in a certain spot, and then I know that's going to be where my cut would be, for example. You see what I mean? Because that kind of covers the thing I was trying to tell you earlier as well. Um, so, right, now I'm going to quickly do this cut across here. That'll leave me one board over there, and then just that little angly dangly bit to do across there. Uh, as you can see, still keeping the three mil gap at every joint. You're not going to go wrong at all. So, happy days, I'll get these bits done and I'll be back with whatever it is I'm ended up doing next. Right, there we go. One roof boarded, looking beautiful. So once you've kind of got it on and you kind of got it all nailed in and you're happy with everything, go around with something flat and metallic. And what you want to do is, you're going to follow, just go around and just do that, right? So I left that one there so that you can hear and I can feel that that now isn't quite disappeared so that way you can just go along take a hat and just home any nails that haven't quite gone flush under the surface because what you don't want to do is when you put your rubber roof on any nails that are proud there is the potential that they could like permeate it they wouldn't unless it's sticking out a mile because actually you know rubber edpm is really really tough old gear but again it's just it'd be stupid not to just quickly run across and check hammer them home and you know that every nail is done and dusted. Uh, so that is it up here done. What I'll do now is get all my tools down, have a little reset of sight, because down here, like, see me off cuts of wood where I've chopped stuff and now I don't like working in a mess, so I'll get all that cleared out, get it all in the skip. Uh, then I will go around on the inside, get rid of any like nails and stuff that's just kind of popped through where I've missed joists or whatever. Um, even when you like mark them up, sometimes you miss. So I'm just gonna run with a disc cutter, get rid of all those, clear up the site a little bit as a reset. And then if the rubber hasn't turned up, I'll start putting some um, breathable membrane on the outside of the building, which would be good fun. So yeah, hopefully the rubber turns up so we can get it waterproof. And if I've done the um, weatherproof membrane, that means this building is 100% watertight and 100% waterproof. I do like that, I like it a lot. Uh, so there you go, there's another little top tip. Scrape the joints to make sure that everything's good and ready to go. Before I fit the rubber EDPM, you can just see down there in the corner next to my chop saw is a blower. So what I'll do is, when I get up here next, get that blow off, just, just remove any debris, any dust, any crap before then gluing this down. But I'll tell you more about that once I kind of get that on site and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Right, it's official. I've moved in now. Uh, so now I've covered it over with top because the rubber is not here. So even if it turns up, I won't get a chance to glue it today. Uh, I've now had a nice clear up of the site. All my stuff is now inside. I've built myself a workshop. I like this intermediary part because I've got somewhere to work and I can stay dry. That's a massive bonus. Uh, the other thing I've done is not only have I cleared up the site, as we see it, I've cleared up the site of all the debris, those bits and pieces in crap around the corner. Oh yeah. That's clean, uh, which actually works out for my favor as much as anything else, because I will now be putting on the um, breathable membrane. So this stuff is dead simple to put on. Here we have some that I have used partially. Um, so there you go, job is good. This is one make, I've got another one because this probably won't do it. So I've got another one ready to rock and roll. It's a different brand, exactly the same stuff, doesn't make a bloody difference. What this stuff will do, it'll get wrapped on the outside of the building. So that'd be around this corner here, all the way around there, all the way around the whole building. What it does is, because it is bloody fantastic. So this side faces us with the print on. Water hits this or air moisture or whatever cannot permeate going in that direction through it, okay? But any moisture inside the building can go out through it. So essentially it allows the building to breathe. So, you know, if you've got kettles in here or whatever, it doesn't make any difference. You know, the, the building, the moisture can get in and out. There's trickle vents on the windows as well. It's about managing airflow. A bit like underneath, we've got airflow underneath. Uh, on the outside, I'll put battens on. The side will be single battens for the metal sheeting. For the cladding, it'll be double battens at the front. So you've just got air running past that, essentially. You'll have a waterproof membrane on the inside here as well, a vapor barrier 
which will help prevent moisture coming in. So if moisture from outside did get in, which it won't, it hits there and then allow it can breathe back outside again. Do you see what I mean? It's all these little things, it's all the all these little thoughts um, to make this uh, modern build using all modern like our materials and that. They are bloody brilliant. So this building is gonna be spectacular. Um, they all are because all built to the same spec. But don't skip any of these steps, okay? This stuff, I think for a roll of just 25 meters, and this is one and a half meters tall, it's about 70 quid. End of the day, you know, it's 70 quid, but it'll save you a lot of ass like, kind of later on, do you know what I mean? So do it, get it. And the way we fix this, hammer tack or tack hammer, whichever way you want to put it. Hold it up with one hand, whack it on, done. I use these tack wise, so I'll use anything to be fair. These are kick around in the bottom of the bag. They'll do the job 10 mil. So I'll get this baby wrapped up and then see what the time is, see what else I can get on with. Um, but like I said, that is a roof on. Very chuffed and I've got a little workspace now. Makes me happy. Check it out. Gift wrapped. I'll say that to a client. No one, I'm good at like wrapping stuff up for Christmas and birthdays, whatever the occasion is, I'm pretty sweet. But yeah, there we go. She is now officially wrapped. Not wrapped as in done, obviously, completely different thing. But wraps is in, yeah, that is nicely sort of all uh, membraned up. You don't have to take the joints. I had some four left over and I thought, why not? I'll use what I've got. So I did. So that's that all done. Uh, so yes, that's not a bad old day. Um, tomorrow shall be getting back. Hopefully the rubber roof will turn up tomorrow. So I can get it on, glued and finished. Uh, in the meantime, I'll be picking up some PR insulation so I can crack on. We're getting the insulation into the walls now, ceiling, <coughs> and that is basically kind of just cracking on with that, really. Um, yes, and what else? So then possibly, I'll say, hopefully the rubber roof will be it, and I can get that done. Tomorrow's going to be one of the sort of days where you're kind of doing bits and pieces where you can, because like I say, depending on when stuff turns up. But in the meantime, I can pick up the PIR, I can exchange some OSB 3, which I've over-ordered slightly, uh and exchange for that so yes that is my plan so that is it i'm done if you like what you've seen don't forget to like subscribe and hit the bell icon leave a comment if you've got any questions or you're just a bit like why do i do it this way what's that if you've got ways that you think i could be improving for example tomorrow when i'm using the uh cutting the old insulation a lovely fella sorry i can't remember your name told me about uh an insulation saw i've got that from tool station it's brand new in the van ready to rock and roll apparently 95 percent less dust than cutting it with a wood saw I can't wait to try that out. Uh, so yeah, I'm always up for learning new stuff. So if you've got any comments, ping them down below. But in the meantime, I'll see you all tomorrow.